Okay, let's do a video on the presidential debate. Now, a lot of uh, Chinese geopolitical commentators spoke out after the debate, and I'm gonna borrow just a short section of Professor Sun Yi. He watched the video debate live, and then he made the following comments. First on Harris. What Harris wants to do here is to duplicate the strategy of Biden in 2020 to put together an anti-Trump coalition. But the tricky part is that back in 2020, Biden was the challenger and Trump was the president. So it was easier for Biden to attack Trump and difficult for Trump to counter because Biden was not in power. Because Biden can blame Trump, but Trump cannot blame Biden. What Harris is trying to do here is that even if Harris and the Democrats are the party in power, Harris need to pretend that she's not in power. So what Harris need to do is to be shameless. She needs to remove public's memory and replace them with a new set of memories. So Harris need to demonstrate to the public if she's not in power over the last three years. At least not her. And all of the suffering that the American people endured over the last three years were not her fault. It has nothing to do with her. And the hardship and the mess US is in today are inherent problems from Trump's term before 2020. And that if Trump returned to power, Americans are going to suffer even more. She needs to give American voters a sense of uncertainty if good things were happened in the last three years. Oh, I'm the one to be praised. If bad things happen. Sorry, who's in charge again? Not me. I think that's Harris' advantage. She's a talented politician, someone who can manipulate and navigate herself into a position of power. I must admit she has talent, but not in policy making or governance, but in political manipulation and acting. She will do anything to gain power. Now, this is what Shen Yi said about Trump. I think the problem with Trump is that he never accepted the fact that the Democrats were able to remove Biden and install a new candidate, Kamala Harris. Trump's debate tactic is enough to defeat Biden with ease. Trump has this illusion that the one who's standing there was not Kamala Harris, and many of his offensive tactics were intent to aim at Biden. Trump might be carrying this mentality that, hey, I already won. It is supposed to be an easy win for me. You guys cheated. You guys swapped Biden for Harris. That's so not fair. I even dodge a bullet for this crap. It's even fair to say that Trump not only opened a bottle of champagne in celebration of his certain victory against Biden. He's in fact already drunk half of a bottle of that champagne already. And he's half drunk in confidence and has to wake up to the fact that his defeated opponent was replaced and came back with full health. In addition, I have the feeling that Kamala Harris works much better with her campaign planner than Trump, in which she is willing to follow her planner's tactic and perform accordingly. Trump, on the other hand, is probably more self-centered and self-confident. It is much more difficult for his advisor to influence him. So this debate demonstrated that Trump's campaign team is either less talented or Trump is too confident in changing his tactic. That's what Sun Yi said in his interview right after the debate. Uh, other Chinese geopolitical commentators also declare Harris as the winner of the debate. However, many pointed out that the two anchors were clearly on the side of Harris. And this was a stage three on one debate. Now, I sat through the whole debate, and let me be honest with you guys, if not for the content of this channel, I probably won't watch more than five minutes of it. 
And even after sitting through the whole debate, I, I don't know what kind of material I can put together to entertain or to inform my audience that does not consist in me wasting your time because it is a waste of my time. It's one of those shows that you are watching it live, but you don't really remember what they said five minutes ago. And it's very difficult to concentrate, or shall I say embarrassing to listen to. And I keep having to pause and take deep breaths. And my mind keeps zooming out. It's like my brain is going into triage mode, you know, damage control mode. And as I continue, another voice seems to speak to me. It's like a ghost. A uh, spirit. Unions are going to be affected very soon, and you see what's happening. You see what's happening. Well, it's divide and conquer. I mean, if you wonder why American society is so divided, I mean, divided in so many ways. It isn't just that the divides are deep; it's that the divides are so many. Black and white, race against race, advocates of this issue against opponents of this issue, even men against women and women against men. There isn't a single category、uh, within that society that doesn't have some corresponding nemesis. It's just divide and conquer, playing out domestically, and Democrats and Republicans is just another one of these divisions because the country has been conquered by corporate economic imperialists. Look, I don't care who you vote for in November because power doesn't care who you vote for in November. I've said it before:、uh, if you imagine that unelected power of the private sector is going to entrust the public with deciding how things are going to be run and who's going to run things, then you're living in a fantasy. It's absurd. America has subverted, sabotaged, and strangled democracies all around the world. They've been interfering with, tampering with, rigging elections across the globe for decades, from Haiti to Honduras, from Italy to Iran, from、uh, Syria to South Africa. They've toppled governments, assassinated elected officials, fixed elections, bribed and bullied and bulldozed democracies on every continent for a century. They don't think that any population. Uh, in any country in the world,、uh, can be trusted to elect leaders who will safeguard the interests of the American elite. So, what makes you think、uh, that they're going to trust you with that power? They rig elections and install、uh, whoever they want in country after country. But somehow, you think、uh, that they're not going to do that in your country. Well, how naive can you be? Listen, the election cycle in America is nothing but a mechanism for what you can call the.、Uh, Campaign industrial complex, whereby billions upon billions of dollars of contributions, your money,、uh, are funneled into the private sector. I mean, when you donate to a politician or you donate to a candidate, where do you think that money goes? It goes directly to business. You're not doing anything but increase the revenue streams of consultancies,、uh, uh, ad agencies, analytics firms, PR firms, media companies, social media companies, digital marketing agencies, events coordinators, on and on. This is nothing but the public providing basically an economic stimulus package、uh, to unproductive industries. It's a wealth transfer that you yourselves are participating in. You're literally just donating money to the private sector and getting nothing in return. Getting nothing in return except that、uh, you get to watch the most expensive fan fiction movie about democracy ever produced. I mean, look at the Democrats, Kamala Harris. Was just appointed as the nominee. She wasn't voted for. This is straight up succession, not election. There were no primaries. She hasn't had to outline her policy platform, and no one needs her to do that. All she has to do、uh, is to not be Donald Trump. This is the logic of demonization versus policy debate as a campaign strategy. No candidate has to win your approval as long as the whole election is framed in the lesser of two evils scenario. And what's the point of that? To make the pre-programmed win seem plausible. That's all, and to not leave any opening for dissent to manifest that might make the win seem implausible. Because, for instance, if voters actually have demands of this candidate or that candidate, and the candidate fails to address those demands, then it could cast doubt upon their eventual victory. And inevitably, if a candidate does address voter demands, well, that will always end up alienating some other faction of voters. So we don't talk about issues. We don't talk about how to deal with issues. We just rally behind our party's candidate in lockstep because the other party's candidate is literally the devil incarnate.
when you're operating in the in the in the lesser of two evils framework you're always going to have decidedly low expectations of your chosen candidate and that's perfect when the election is already fraudulent in the first place so this uncomplicates the rigging process yes i said rigging and don't think for a second don't you imagine that that's a conspiracy theory that the U.S. rigs elections. But between uh, 1946 and 2000, America is documented to have interfered with, tampered with, uh, malignly influenced or outright rigged at least 88 elections from Europe to Latin America to Asia to Africa. So again, if you think uh, that they'll do this everywhere else, but your so-called democracy is pristine, I would, I would have to ask you why you think so. Why would it be more important to the power structure to control the outcome of an election in, say, Guyana, than it would be for them to control the outcome of an election in the United States of America. Because yes, Guyana is one of the countries where America rigged elections in the past. I'm telling you, I don't care who you vote for, because power doesn't care who you vote for, because the outcome is not determined by you. You know, Biden stepped aside uh, because his pre-programmed victory could never be convincing. But look, Biden himself, the fact of Biden, a man who is literally in late stage senility, a man who is visibly disintegrating before our eyes, the very fact that he was not only president, but was absolutely going to be run for another term, despite being a cadaver on strings, that should let you know that power does not reside in that office. Politicians serve two functions. The first is to distract you with the performance of democratic government. And the second is to be effigies that can be burned to satisfy public anger when the policies dictated by the private sector impose misery on the population. So when an American asks me who should they vote for, or uh, uh, when they say that this one is better than that one, or at least not as bad as that one, and what do I think, and so on and so on and so on, well, you may as well be asking me about what, which Marvel superhero is better than the other, because you're not talking to me about figures who have any real significance with regards to policy. You're not talking to me about figures who actually uh, exert any control over anything. You're not talking about the real existing power structure. You're asking me to give you an opinion about a fictional scenario in which your government wields independent power. As long as you're fixated on this charade, there's no danger whatsoever of you ever having any impact on policy. You're just facilitating and collaborating with the divide and conquer tactics of the owners and controllers of global financialized capital. And I don't know how you can be so propagandized, to be honest. I don't know how you can be so propagandized that you can't even notice that, that, uh, in, uh, that actually your own media does tell you every day that the government is not in charge. I mean, how many times have you read or how many times have you heard uh, in the media, the market will decide? We have to see what the market does and so on. But when they say the market, they don't mean you and I, they mean big business, multinational corporations, asset managers, you know, stock market whales, not voters, not citizens, not Democrats, and not Republicans. You live in an oligarchy, and your so-called democracy is only performed as a distraction uh, to keep you from noticing that fact. Now, for this election in the U.S., as I've said, Harris and Trump are just mascots representing two different factions of the OCGFC. And it's going to be just like what happened in Venezuela. The only way that Trump can win is by trying to outrig the election rigging of the Democrats. But the Democrats are the incumbents like Maduro was. So they have the advantage of overseeing the succession and Harris is likely to win. The only thing that Trump can do is to try to boost his own popularity to the point uh, that Harris's pre-programmed victory looks less plausible. But like I said before, it's not musical chairs where both candidates are walking in circles uh, around the chair uh, until the music stops and then they have to race uh, race for the seat. Kamala is already in the seat, just like Maduro, and it's harder to get someone out of that seat than it is to just sit in it. So it looks like the neocons will probably stay in the White House. And that just means that the real battle between the military-industrial complex OCGFC and the global-oriented OCGFC, uh, that battle is just going to go on a while longer. But if you're fool enough to think that you have to drop everything in order to ensure that Kamala Harris will win and Trump will lose, uh, well, then you're, 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 you're literally like someone who can watch those old Roadrunner cartoons and still get worried and anxious about whether or not the coyote is going to catch him. I mean, I know it's important for you uh, to think uh, that you have some kind of control, but the truth is, the reality is you're not writing this story. And you're not writing how this story goes. And as long as you think that you are writing how this story goes or participating in any way whatsoever, 
then that just ensures that you will uh, always be nothing but a spectator. Unless and until you redirect your activism towards the private sector, and I mean organize and mobilize with the understanding that, for example, corporations are political entities. So treat them as such, deal with them as such, impose expectations and demands upon them as such. Unless and until you do that, all your get out the vote initiatives, all your campaigning, all your voting will never do anything for social and political change except to ensure that it won't happen. Boeing, for example, just used your government to make around uh, $20 billion. Boeing, uh, Raytheon, and all the other merchants of death and destruction. They just got $20 billion of your money to keep the genocide going in Gaza. That's their policy. Zionism is their policy. Genocide is their policy, and they're doing it for money. And they give almost evenly to the Democrats as they do to the Republicans, except they give slightly more to the Democrats. And it's almost even between what they give to uh, Kamala Harris and to uh, Donald Trump. They contributed a bit more to Harris. I shouldn't actually say contribute, I should say invest, because they give that money as an investment uh, from which they expect astronomical returns, which they will get. These are the entities that control your policy. It's not your ballot, it's their billions. Your government is captured and your, uh, your country has been captured and power and decision making has been transferred from the public sector to the private sector. Your laws and your policies are written by corporate lawyers, not by congressmen. You know, your democracy has actually become uh, like the British monarchy. It's just an empty tradition. You know, you go out to vote the same way that British people will go out and line the streets just to watch the king pass by on a horse and carriage. It's just a nod uh, to the lore and heritage of your society. It's a ritual that has no real significance beyond the psychological and the emotional. It's a collective, society-wide, self-soothing gesture. America is a corporate authoritarian system cosplaying as a democracy. And everybody around the world sees you. You know, uh, you people who are campaigning for Trump or campaigning for Harris, everyone around the world sees you as someone who's like at a cosplay event and dressed up like Iron Man, but who actually thinks that the buttons on his costume work. We have to elect Trump. Uh, or the meteor is going to destroy the earth. We have to elect Harris or multi-dimensional aliens will kill us all. You're really invested uh, in the fantasy storyline. But nobody in the world thinks that your democracy exists except for you. Because we know all too well what your democracy looks like when you export it to us. And you have the same one that you sent us, which means that you don't have one either. Look, you are not constituents of politicians, you're constituents of companies and you need to organize yourselves along these lines. Democratize private sector power. At some point, your activism and your strategy has to actually be informed by the real existing power dynamics in your society, not just by the official version of the power structure that they taught you in civics class. Until you do that, I'm telling you that the harder you work for this party or the harder you work for that party, well, you're doing nothing but fortify and reinforce uh, your own disenfranchisement and your own irrelevance. Do you guys get the vibe? <laughs> that was from a channel named Middle Nation. You guys can check it out. I only watched a few video from that channel and I will say the host uh, Shahid, his narrative and opinion is within the sphere of my own perspective of the world, but definitely at the extreme end. Let's put it that way. For example, he's referring to the US election to be completely meaningless, uh, all controlled by MIC and bankers and raw global financial capital and all this and that. It's all crap, okay? Everything stage, which I watched the clip a few weeks ago when it was published, and I, I understand what he's trying to say, but um, I understand him because he's a Muslim and American politics disregarding which party is in power treat the you know middle east and muslim countries very crappy and especially now with israel in the driving seat of politics in that area however i disagree with him because american politics even if it is in his point of view and to me as well maybe not that extreme it's rotten from within yes uh, but it still has different fashions within that rotten core 
and fashions have different pi priorities, right? So even if Russians knew by heart that no matter which party got into power, that they're all driven by global financial capital, yes, but it matters to the Ukrainian war. Maybe it will not affect the very end result, but it will change the cost of the war because uh, uh, at the moment, Democrats are willing to make the war last as long as possible, while the Republicans might want to end the war. So to the Russians, it matters who gets into power. And same thing when it comes to US and China relationship, both parties might be anti-China, but their strategy is clearly different. And that matters to China as well. So to Shahid and Muslims in the Middle East, or let's say Central America and, and South America, it might be 95 to 100% meaningless, <laughs> this election. Uh, American oligarchy power projection onto them is absolute no matter which power party is in power. But to China and Russia, it, it might be 60% the same crap, but 40% it is uh, maneuverable, let's put it that way. And this actually defines uh, some core uh, philosophical difference when you compare Chinese-Russian versus uh Middle East, for example, which I do listen to a few Islamic geopolitical commentators here on YouTube. Their faith and their hopes for change lies in Allah and perhaps the awakening of the Western public to the reality of the world. But Chinese and Russians, we have a different belief. We believe that truth, righteousness, um, dignity, justice are ultimately determined by the range of your artillery, okay? That you can only guard and protect the things you cherish and you love from a position of strength. We, we hope that the collective West can wake up to reality, but we need to prepare for the worst. That's unfortunately the reality to us. That's it for today. Richard signing out. FBI Director Ray's testimony before our House Judiciary Committee back in July.